time too, but I just gave you the note cards in case uh, if you wanted to write them down so you wouldn't forget things. So somebody want to volunteer to go first and ask their question? Why don't you, why, why right here? <laughs> He's not going to like. <laughs> Face. Hello, Representative Blount. I'm glad you finally showed up to talk to us. My question is, why do we need to drill for oil in the Arctic? The risk of environmental catastrophe is too great. That's a great question. Can I have, did you write your question down? I'll just go ahead. Don't be shy, yeah, jump up. Stand here. So, Rod Blum, you do a ton of photo ops at places like the Arc of East Central Iowa, which my daughter attends, um, group, group respite frequently at. But you have voted to cut the Medicaid coverage for those disabled kids that helps them live independent and full lives. And you refuse to meet with us, the families of those kids that are doing our, the best job we can. So, if you continue to, or if Medicaid does get cut, what's your plan for? Um, I want disabilities, like my daughter, if the me if they don't no longer receive like the speech therapy, the physical therapy, the respite, the supported community living that Medicaid funds. Questions? Feels like the price is right, man. Come on down. <laughs> concerned that you voted to allow more private company and industrial scientists on the National Science Board. By definition, they have a huge conflict of interest problem. Could you tell me what the reasons were for that vote? Congressman Blum, how does removing the CFPB rule that allows class action lawsuits against corporations like Equifax and Wells Fargo that have built people out of millions of dollars illegally and forces people to go into private arbitration because of that, how does that help the average island? <clears throat> <laughs> Congressman Blum, do you plan to run for re-election? <laughs> if he's not going to run again, he doesn't care if we like how he votes. He can vote however he yeah. pleases if he plans to be gone. But we'll remember what he's doing if he runs for re-election. Yeah. Right. And by the way, if you're getting tired of talking to candidates that don't listen to you, there's a bunch back there that could probably use your help. <laughs> And I do remember how he teared up talking about unborn children. It was a very moving moment. And so my question to Rod Blum is, how can you toss 9 million children off the ranks of insurance when you are so tearful about unborn children who can't live independently outside their mother's womb? And I would also ask how it is that an unborn child can already have a 529 plan <laughs> and uh, how 529s now can finance K-12 through education, obviously for wealthy people, uh, because very few others would be able to put away the money in a 529 for their um, child in elementary school. So I would suggest that that was a little bit of stage acting and you don't really have very much regard for children. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you. 
Representative Blum, as a retired military family, what will happen to Medicare and Social Security when you start raiding the funds? They are earned monies, and taking it is theft. So what I'm going to ask right now for you to do is those same lovely folks that you spoke to at the very beginning of this town hall event, you introduced yourself to, and you shared what your concerns were. I want you to just share with them for a minute before we get ready to leave today, before we wrap up, what is your next step? What are you going to do when you walk out the door? Something brought you here tonight, okay? Whether you're concerned, whether you're PO and you're not going to take it anymore, okay? What did you hear tonight? Conversations, questions. What is your next step? When you walk out the door, what are you going to do to say, no, this tax plan isn't okay? No, it's not okay for you to cut Medicare to pay for a tax break for millionaires like Rod Blum. Okay? So just share with your neighbor, what's your next step? What are you going to do when you walk out the door today? Go ahead and have that conversation. Amy, I have a question before. Is this a Rod Blum question? It is. Oh, okay, <laughs> sure. Um, I understood that uh, there was some, that he is meeting with small groups, like for example, he met with uh, people who were big on carrying guns last, uh, right, six months ago. And uh, he, I understand that he's going to be meeting with local business ones. Now the question I have is, are we doing anything as far as getting our people there? The people, that, if we have any local business women in our group, for example. Or I know we had some people who carry guns and were actually, <laughs> able, to, actually able to get into the meeting. <laughs> so that's kind of, it's, it's kind of important. Sure. So I think what Steve is uh, referring to is, I believe it's December 19th, is that correct? Um, uh, uh, Representative Blum is holding a Women in Business Forum conference event. Um, I believe it's at the Cedar Rapids Library. Does anyone know the time on that for sure? What the times are on that? It's on Facebook. Um, is it during the day? Or is it I believe it's during the day. Yeah. So if that's, if that's something that applies to you, appeals to you, um, th that would certainly be an event to go to. Yep, encourage you to go to that. Um, if anybody knows on Facebook real quick when that is. One of the, <laughs> one of the things that he does now, which we're aware of, is the fact that he does have meetings, but he meets with the people who are his big contributors. Right. It's our, and it's already planned out who's going to be there, and who he's going to talk to, and none of us know that, but the big money people do, and, that, and that's what most. That's it's from four to six p.m. Four to six p.m. So it is in the it is in the afternoon then. But I think it's an invited situation. Where is it? You have to register. It's a showcase too, so you, anybody can go. You don't have to be a member of all the business. It's a it's a showcase for their businesses as well. So anybody can go. Right. Sure. Thank you. So, so can you send out and <laughs> I, I can, yeah. So if if you were uh, if you signed in, I can certainly send that information out. Yeah. So thank you, Steve, for bringing that up. Um, you know, just trying to attend some of those events where where he could possibly be if you have questions or concerns um, to address with uh, with Representative Blum. Um, last I had heard, it was one of his staffers who was um, doing that event. 
So I don't know. Well, I don't know if the I don't know if the congressman wants to review it. I don't think he actually. Is there one answer? Comment on what people talk about talking to their staffers. Sure. So I had something really interesting happen to me this last week, and and I won't give specifics and protect the person, but um, someone who has been a staffer for a Republican uh, office holder recently, uh, like in the last year or two, I'll say. Um, because they just wanted to get involved in politics and know what it's like to be a staffer, is now volunteering on my campaign. When you reach out to the staffers, it doesn't, they might not agree with the candidate. Um, and so it does affect people, and it does affect to hear those stories. And the reason they're reaching out to my campaign is because they actually said, I like that you're there, I like you can listen. And they said, I worked in that office, and I had to spend a year listening to people come to me with concerns and not seeing that response from the person that was elected to do that job. And so, you know, even if you don't get through to your representative, it affects, it does affect change. And so those are real people, and when you hear them like, a lot of times you'll walk, talk to their staffers, we've been in and talk to staffers, and you see them like kind of tearing up over a story or something that you tell, that's real, and just because they don't necessarily always agree with their boss. Like those are people who are doing that job because they think it's important. So. It does affect it does affect things even if it doesn't directly affect you know the, so don't give up on calling and so keep calling so <laughs> keep calling keep and calling and if you can be specific because even if they are going to vote for this bill maybe we can talk about if you're really concerned about graduate education maybe you can ask them to make an amendment against that if you have a specific thing that you really hate about this bill if you can be specific we can maybe make some changes to make it less damaging so even if you can't get them to vote no completely if you can be as specific as possible. Grab one of those things or two of those things that you really, really are concerned about. Because if they keep hearing this particular item over and over again from that database, they're going to step back and say, well, wait a minute, maybe we need to pull that out. Or maybe they go, I won't vote for a bill that has it in there. Maybe it doesn't get passed because they say that was my hard line. Because a lot of them, even if they are kind of supportive of this, I mean, right now Republicans go control the House, the Senate, and all this, it's still taking them time to get through because there's one or two issues that each one of them is kind of like their issue. So, if we elevate that, it does have an impact. Even if you say this bill overall they're going to favor it, it can make it less damaging, or maybe it stops it from getting passed because enough people had one or two issues that they couldn't get the math to work out. Right now they're having trouble because it's so expensive, this $1.7 trillion bill, that it's above what they're allowed to do uh, for the cost. The CBO then analyzed it, so they're having to pull things out, and they can't get enough things together to get people to vote. They're having a really hard time getting it passed by and still protecting all the things that people want because it would be way too expensive. So there is some hope. Yeah. And and you bring up a great point. Um, right now, uh, for those of you who don't know, the bill is is in conference. They have to reconcile it between the House and the Senate. Um, and so the the conferees are meeting and they're having a conversation and they're trying to figure out what exactly to put in this bill. Um, the last I had heard, they were looking to vote on it around the 19th. Okay. So that gives us a week. So that that ask that I'm asking to you, conversation with your neighbor. What are you going to do when you walk out the door? Are you going to make phone calls? Are you going to write a letter to the editor? Who are you going to talk to? What are you going to do? How are you going to take what we did here today and make a difference out there with the people who maybe don't know about what we talked about here today? So just have that conversation with your neighbor. What's your next step? <laughs> Thank you.
I'm here under my other hat. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to bring us back together. <laughs> because I do want to honor your time and I don't want to, I don't want to keep you here past six. Um, so really quickly, what are some things that you and your neighbor talked about? What are your next steps? What are you going to do when you walk out the door? We were talking about while making phone calls, but rather than scattering all over the place with what a specific thing we think you should work on, is there something that love might be um, I know that I know the two things that he's working on right now. I think he's co-sponsoring the bill to end the congressional slush fund for the sexual harassment payouts. Um, and the other thing that he is co-sponsoring is the bill to end Jeremy. So that really isn't an issue in our state so much, um, but those are the two things that he's really working on. So, but as far as tax wise, that he might want, you know, to get rid of. Do you have an answer to that? Yeah, he has said that uh, he has been out there saying he does not want to eliminate the historic preservation tax credit, mm -hmm. um, which is a version of the bill eliminating the historic preservation tax credit. Where we vote for. I think he voted for. And the second thing that he said to was the energy credits. So he had voted for the House bill and it didn't have the energy credits for the wind, which we know Iowa benefits greatly from that. So those might be two things, um, the historic preservation and, and uh, the wind energy credits. And if I could just add, he said in the campaign both times he was the bail the budget guy. And this bill has over a trillion dollars One point five trillion. That was the last figure. Even with dynamic, right? Some dynamic, some versions of dynamic scoring as well over trillion. The CPO said it's one point five trillion directly, and then it's one point five trillion of the So, so I think the deficit is definitely a concern, yeah. and I think Senator Hoagie bring up a good point that he did campaign on being the balanced budget guy. There's actually a great quote, I think it was in the Dubuque Telegraph Herald, where he says that, like he's the balanced budget guy. So that might be something to add to that phone call. So phone calls, what's something else you're going to do when you walk out the door? What's your next step? I'm going to email people in my life to they compliment me on being politically active, and I'm going to say, I need your help. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> What's another next step? What's another next step? Yeah, I, <laughs> I look for contacts. I think it'd be imperative for everyone to try to go away from this to try to bring maybe four or five, maybe as much as ten, as many contacts as possible 
to give to Indivisible so that they would have more information at their disposal. I think that's essential that we get more people working on this because, you know, the change that we affect is going to be a function of the size of the number of people that we have for the employment basis. So. Other next steps? You know, one thing that I have found very heartening is opening the Gazette anymore is really a very pleasant experience. And so, you know, <laughs> ten years ago it was very depressing. And I have to say, there have been some great letters by people recently. You know, they're really hammering away at it. Editorials by our staff here. So, you know, that's another thing. Just keep writing letters to the editor. Even though we realize not enough people read newspapers, it does get some coverage. And, you know, it's online. And so... That's really a way to speak to everybody else and get your message out. It, yes, writing letters to the editor. Uh, there are some handouts up here still. If you want talking points, please grab one of those on your way out. And if you didn't get one because we ran out of copies, my email address is on that card. I will gladly send you information if you need information for talking points on writing a letter to the editor. But that's a great way to reach a lot of people. Um, one last thing that I have, uh, ACA enrollment ends on December 15th. One of the things that's been cut this year um, is the publicity for it. There are not ads on TV, there's nothing on the radio, and <laughs> the website's actually down on Sundays um, from one or from midnight until 12 noon. So if you want to take a stack of these, put these around your community, in your library, at a bank, somewhere, I have a bunch of copies. Please take these with you, put them up, share them if you live in an apartment complex, Anywhere that you have access to um, a community board, please take these with you. Help get people signed up. Um, the numbers are good. They look good. But what we need to get is more healthy people enrolled in, in um, the Affordable uh, Care Act. Okay? So these are here for you to take. Um, I'm going to take just a couple more minutes of your time, I promise, and then I'll let you go. Um, there are two people who did want to make announcements. They had asked me um, if they could do that. So I'm going to go ahead and let them do that. Cindy, if you want to go ahead and, and speak. Yeah, thank you, Amy. Uh, one of the, the groups that uh, was a grassroots organization that formed after the inauguration and the Women's March was indivisible. Uh, here in Iowa, we have organized ourselves around state senate districts. So in the metropolitan area, we have three state senate districts. If you're wondering about the next step, what do you do next? How do you get more involved? How do you bring people into this movement? Indivisible is a great vehicle for doing that. We have some regularly occurring events. We write postcards twice a month. Uh, we do a protest that actually Valerie Smith started last January outside Senator Ernst and Grassley's office every Tuesday at noon. Uh, we meet every Thursday at the Booth Strawberry at 9 a.m. Um, at one point in time, we were actually talking to Blum Staffer. We don't do that anymore for some reason. Um, but we continue to meet and sometimes do go over to his office and talk to his staffer, um, whether we're invited or not. If it's not locked. If it's not locked, and if there's someone there. But anyway, if, if you don't know what your next step is, I would encourage you to join us. I've got some cards here. Um, Basically, we organize through Facebook, but we have a Twitter account and we have email. Um, so if you're not sure what to do next, this is a good place to get together with like-minded people. So just grab a card from me on your way out. Great. Thanks, Amy. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul Esker. I'll be real brief. Uh, national politics is very important, and local politics is too. 2018 is right around the corner. There's a gentleman running for state auditor named Rob Sand, who's going to be here in Cedar Rapids on Tuesday. If you haven't heard, he's going to be down at the Quarter Barrel from 4.30 to 6. Rob Hogue is going to be there as well. Liz Bennett will be there. Um, Rob Sand is a great guy. He's currently an attorney with the Attorney General. He's a brilliant up-and-comer in state politics. So hopefully we'll come out and meet him and get a chance to uh, meet other activists and Democrats in the area. Tell okay. me time. Uh, quarter Barrel on Tuesday, 4.30 to 6. Downtown. Thank you. Um, if you have postcards, please leave those with us. If you want to sign the big letter, please do that. Um, and keep your eyes out for an announcement this week for a giant inflatable chicken appearing in Sierra. <laughs> Thank you guys for attending. I appreciate it. I look forward to seeing your letters to the editor. Um, if you have questions, please ask. But thank you so much for giving us your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you.
video or <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, so we 